What is going on, Mark Duffy? Welcome to my channel. On today's episode, let's talk about what's in my camera bag. So for me, normally when you see these camera bag videos, you know, you'll see a videographer style photographer or someone who delves a lot into landscape photography or what have you. But because I've moved into a more commercial photographer role, I nearly need to be a chameleon when it comes to different genres and disciplines in photography. So I have a different setup for nearly everything that I need. And first and foremost, we might as well say it straight out. I don't know if we should call it a sponsored video because I'm actually an ambassador for the company. So I, I'm actually endorsed fully by Vanguard. So the bags and tripods I'm gonna be showing today are obviously going to be Vanguard products. So uh, I don't know, do you want to call that sponsored? Is it sponsored? Ah, I don't really care. This is the product I use and this is the gear that I use. So uh, in, with that said, let's move in and let's see what kind of camera bags I use. So, and this is the biggest bag I use and this is reserved for landscape photography mainly and when I need to do like video shoots for the reasons that this bag is huge. This is the Vanguard Alderize 51D. I think this is the biggest bag that they do in this kind of range. You have a section here for your main cameras. You also have a section up top and you have a separate section down the bottom. So all my camera gear go in the middle. If I have any audio equipment I need to take for a video shoot like I did yesterday, it goes in there. And then all my knickknacks and all that there, they go up top, so all the filters and stuff. So. That said, let's uh, let's see what kind of gear would I be taking for a landscape photography shoot. So first up, the camera. What am I using? Fuji XT3 is my main camera for everything. So it doesn't matter what I'm shooting, if it's landscape or anything. The only thing I don't shoot with the XT3 is the behind the scenes because usually this is in the scene. So that's the only reason why that is. Uh, love this camera. I'm getting extremely great results out of it, but I get great results out of the XT2. So I'm really happy with the Fuji system. So moving on, what else am I using? My main lens is of course the 10 to 24. This is by far my favorite lens. Uh, just, it suits my style. I love it. It's so versatile, it's so sharp. And in comparison to size, it's greatly smaller. Like, look at the size of that. Like, look, I can hold the whole thing in my hand. I don't have, sm I don't have big hands, but I can hold the whole thing in my hand. You definitely can't do that with a Canon 16 to 35, I can tell you that. And the weight is, is savagely different as well. So um, only thing I don't like with this lens is when it comes to filters and stuff, as you can see, I'm struggling to get the lens cap back on. There we go. Uh, love it, that's my, main, that's my main lens. Most of my landscape photography is shot on the 10 to 24. Up next, we have the 35mm f1.4. Love this wee lens. I don't have it too long. I think I have it maybe a year. Um, I got this specifically for my behind the scenes stuff and for doing event photography and I'm getting great results out of it. You will notice it mostly in my behind the scenes stuff that it, this is the wider shot that I use to actually show the listings of gear I'm using per shoot when I'm posting on to Instagram. And that is the lens I'm using. Really, really nice. And when you pair this up with the next lens, it is a really great combination. So moving on to the next part of the combo for the behind the scenes, it is of course the 56mm f1.2. I love this lens, I love it. Like the 56mm and the 10 to 24, my two favorite lenses on the Fuji system. Um, I got my landscape photography there and just anything I need wide, great lens. And then if I need basically anything else, headshot photography, a little bit of product photography, food photography. If it says photography at the end of it, you can use this lens for it basically. Everything about landscapes and it depends on the landscapes, you can use it for landscapes too. Love the lens, look at the size of it. Like, it's like the size of an espresso cup. It's it's really nice, it's quaint, but it's just a beast. And the price on it as well, can't argue with the price on it. Um, really, really, really enjoying this lens. And as I say, I really hate using these lens caps, these lens hoods. And it's the same when I'm putting filter treads on it. Fuji, just, you just put a little bit extra treading on the edges of your lenses, please, and make my life a lot more easier. This is an absolute quality lens, only thing is, the focusing on it could be better. And that's where the 50mm f2 comes in. But then again, I really would rather a 56mm f1.2 with a better, I don't I don't want to drop down to f2, and I definitely don't want to drop down from 56 to 50. I, I like the focal length of 56. It's nearly the equivalent to an 85. And why should I have to drop down to, to f2? I really enjoy the f1.2. Now for the headshots, I usually shoot at um, f5, but 
If you look at all my really bookalicious behind the scenes stuff, this creamy biscuit is the one that's making it. I just absolutely love it. Now, next is the new kid on the block. I have this for three or four weeks, and I got this specifically for one reason, astrophotography, and it is the Samyang F2, even though I can't actually change it to two. Boom, change it to two. You didn't even see me changing it. I don't know why I was focused on changing it, but um, you'll see at the top of the lens, there's a massive, you know, bulbous element. But to the bottom of the lens, there's also a bulbous element as well. So it's just, I've never seen an element, normally the flat or the, the concave in, but they're never convexed. You know, you see that at the front element. Really sharp lens, really bright lens. The only thing is I'm not a fan of the, see that was easy to get on. Uh, I'm not a fan of the Starburst. It's like four lines. It's like I'm back in the seventies watching a Queen concert. But other than that, uh, really happy with this lens, extremely impressed. I used it for shooting the Neowise Comet. I probably pronounced that wrong. So if I did, I'm Irish. Um, but yeah, really enjoying Milky Way shots with this lately. Um, I would probably have a Milky Way shot this week uh, from Melophon Abbey shot with this lens. I just have to figure out how to use the, the Star Stacker uh, applications. Downloaded a few, I downloaded Sequator, and Deep Sky Stacker. Deep Sky Stacker is possibly most, one of the most convoluted apps I've ever used, and Sequator keeps saving it out as an SRG, sRGB TIFF file, which doesn't suit me for doing prints like behind me, which you, you, I, I like Pro Photo RGB. Anyway, I'm kind of drifting on. That is my Astro lens that is now in, in, the, in the pile. It's a really nice, it has a really short uh, focus distance, so it's nice for doing cool um, out of focus like uh, product shots as well. So it's really nice. I've used that for my for my drawing page on Instagram too. And then I've left this last, uh, as in lenses. I've left it last, and that is it's way on over here. Um, this is not a Fuji lens. This is a Sigma 50 to 100 f 1.8, and I'm using the Fringer Pro adapter. And this means that I can use any Canon lens on a Fuji system with not only full autofocus, but IS as well, so image stabilization. Now this lens does not have image stabilization, but using this lens up to 100 millimeter, which, you know, with the if you wanna do a full frame equivalent, that's the equivalent of 150 mils at f1.8. Now, obviously, if you're talking about equivalents, you're not gonna get, um, you're not gonna get the bokeh of a 1.8 on a crop sensor, you get the equivalent of two, but you, or maybe a 2.4, but at least the light that's coming in is at 1.8. So when you're shooting uh, events like I would be doing with this here, this is fantastic. Again, not the greatest, like look at the size of the element. 82 millimeter front element. It's absolutely insane, but really bright lens, really sharp. The focusing isn't great, but it's known for that, so. Oh well, and I'm gonna admit as well, I think about autofocus too. I never used autofocus up until a year and a half ago. So I'm at photography nearly five years now, and I, for most of it, was always manual focus. Even in the behind the scenes stuff, I would have had manual lenses. I have an old Pentax lens from the 80s. It's totally manual. So I really do enjoy manual focus, and it's only since I started doing photographing people, headshots, events, that I actually need or have a need for autofocus. But this one, this beast here, it comes with me all the time. You never know when you need it. I was out at Slane, photographing at Slane down at, down at the Weir. This was used. Um, I got the comet in the middle of Dundalk at the St. Patrick's Church. This was used once again. This was used at 1.8. Beauty. Um, also, as well, just to say, just to show you some shape. So we have the X-T3. I always carry my X-T2. We are recording with it at the minute. I don't think I need to show you an X-T2. It looks the same as an X-T3. That's just the black version. So if you know what an X-T3 looks like, you know what an X-T2 looks like, and they perform pretty well together. I love the combo of them. So then we move on to what else do I carry? All the kind of knickknacks that you need to go with photography. I don't carry too much stuff. I used to carry a lot more stuff, but I've kind of, I've, I've toned it down a great deal now. So the most important thing that I carry in my bag, other than lenses and cameras, has to be microfiber cloths. I have one, two, three. That's just in the big bag. I have another three in the small bag I'll be showing you now in a second. And I have a microfiber cloth in every pocket of every coat that I own as well. I have microfiber cloths coming out of my ears. 
Uh, they're so important, you need to keep your lenses clean front and back all the time. So, really important. The next important thing is filters. And I have a nice big pouch for mine. Uh, so I'm just using, I just keep it simple. Polarizer, 10 stop, and then a red enhancer. That's the new one. Uh, the red enhancer is what you use to cut on light pollution. And it works really good, love it. Uh, and I use, just to show you size wise as well, I only use one between all the lenses. So I use an 82 millimeter. And of all the lenses I have, the Sigma is the only one with an 82 millimeter tread. What I do use, which is the next important thing, step down rings. And I use them, I have one for every lens, so I'm totally covered. I only need one filter and it covers me for all my lenses and I can use it for cutting out the glare in water or using a long exposure, like two minute long exposure with a 10 stop filter or cutting down the light pollution at an astro scene. Now, as I was talking about the microfiber clots, you should also consider getting one of these little blowers. I think everyone has one of these. So much to be said. It blows air, that's it, cool, job's a good one. I say the next important thing as well is batteries. You can't have enough of them, just endless amounts of batteries. I have this for a light, it's actually the kicker, I'll show you that in a second, I bring that with me again for the behind the scenes stuff. So I bring this light with me, the Young New yn 360S, you've seen me talk about it in other videos, this is the battery that goes with it, so just when we're talking about batteries, I have this, this actually slides in greatly, just there. It would be when I go to do it on a video that it doesn't actually slide in easily. This usually takes no effort, like that. That sits in there, and then this front section will drop like that, and my tripod sits there. So then I'm carrying my tripod. I can, try, I can carry a second tripod there if needs be, usually I don't, but I bring the light with me now. So if I'm doing um, scenes in a city, like Dublin recently, I bring the light with me so I can light my actual camera from my behind the scenes because for me, my behind the scenes are just as important as my final photo because I like to demonstrate how I'm taking my photos, what I'm using and how I'm using it. So to be able to document a property, I need a light with me. The Young New YN is, is a must. Fuji go through batteries. So just buy enough of them. I don't know of any third party batteries for Fuji. So I just, I went and bought a whole load of actual Fuji batteries. They're pretty expensive. I wish they weren't. I think they're 70 euro battery. And for the size of them, what are they? 1260 milliamp hours, like terrible. Uh, so just you just have to get them, you know, um, you fly through batteries, just have enough in your camera, take batteries. For storage of memory, I don't normally have to worry about this too much because a lot of times I'm usually only within an hour, two hours of home. So I don't really need to bring these all that often. So just two things I do actually bring with me sometimes. It depends. I have this right here which is just simply, this is a memory card holder and multiple memory cards. Carry that, sometimes if I'm going away for a weekend, I'll, uh, I'll take that multiple SD cards if I'm doing video and stuff like that there. And then same again for this, the Narbox, if I'm going away for a weekend or if I'm away on holidays or something like that there, I'll take this with me, just open the side, SD card goes in, it's really, really easy. Uh, the photo I have here with the long exposure kind of demonstrates it. Um, don't, I don't bring it with me all the time, but if I need it, I have it and I can use it and bring it with me. Okay, so the final thing to talk about for my landscape photography is uh, a tripod. So I'm using the Vanguard Auto Pro 2 Plus. This is the heavy duty one and I really like it. This is my go-to tripod. I actually have two of these. So I have one with the standard, uh, which one is this now? This is the BH250 ball head. I also have one with a three-way pan head as well. I have I keep that at home for studio work for doing uh, products because I just find it just a, a little bit more accurate when it needs to be accurate. This is really good, but just when I'm doing product photography, I can take my time and really make sure that the lines are proper and all. So, but this is my go-to tripod and I try to have this with me for nearly every shoot that I do. And if I can't take that, then the smaller bag is what I will take and I take a travel uh, set up. So I'm going to show you that really quickly now. So this is my travel bag. This is the Vanguard Veo Discover 38. This is a really quaint bag, little small bag. Love it. It's a sling bag, so it only has one strap, just goes across your shoulders. But one of the great things about it is the fact that it can hold a travel tripod. Isn't that great? And that is the Veo 2 carbon fiber travel tripod. And that's the one I bring when I go on holidays. Really small, really compact, really light. 
and as you can see pretty easy to set up as well so if i'm going on holidays when i went to new york this is what i brought with me um if i don't want to bring the big gear this is what i will take and when i go to events i usually will take this i might not bring the tripod so what i might do is i'll actually take the sigma lens and i'll put it in here as well so it's good for kicking big lenses as well if you have a 70 to 200 stick it in the bottom have your cameras in there so but this is usually what i bring for headshots and stuff limited gear and for this kind of for this stuff here it's it's really really limited what i bring with me so when i bring that bag with me i either don't want to carry much stuff or i don't need to bring much stuff so if i'm going to dublin and i don't really want to be carrying the big bag i'll take the small one and it means i cut back on my stuff and usually what i might take is i'll take the xt3 i'll take the 10 to 24 um, give me the 56 and i might take the 35 and that will do me for the shoot that'll be on the xt3 and i have a combination of stuff for the xt2 for my behind the scenes and i can still take the i can still take the yn 360s i can stick it in the pouch with the tripod so i've got tripod light two cameras and three lenses perfect jobs are good so it's nice and light um as well as that because i might be traveling a little bit more i might be uh, light handed on it might be going handheld around around the city i might bring the snake strap so this is just a wee quick release so this is great so this is kind of for the scenario that maybe you might drop your camera which i would never advise you doing i'm a trained professional <laughs> but yeah i'll have that with me it's usually always in this bag only because um i intend on doing some handheld stuff walking around and, and all that there kind of jazz so that's something i might bring with me too but usually when we talk about what gear i'm going to be bringing with me it's going to be headshot photography so if it's headshot photography that's the bad boy there i might only bring one camera with me um so then if it's headshot photography we're going to talk about triggering lights so we're going to talk about the godox x pro so i use godox lighting i'm using the godox sl60 what i actually use that in my key light for uh, my headshots as it is anyway so I use the, the GoPro, I use the Godox X Pro as the trigger. And what I usually bring is just, I bring one speed light. And I don't usually bring this one. This thing is massive. I go with the small one, but I can't remember where I put them. Um, they're in the studio somewhere. I was using them for something else recently. So I just, this was quick to hand. So I got this one. Uh, I would use this for the background when I want to have a white background in my headshots, put this behind your subject and then trigger it off the camera. But then again, I'm still using the same key light I use here and the same kicker as well. So I use video lights because I want the person's eyes to be pinned. So that's what I bring with me. So basically there's really nothing in that bag really, just one camera, a couple of lenses, maybe some speed light stuff. Some of the different trinkets, you know, like that, you know, you're gonna to wanna to clean your lens, still wanna clean your lens. You have to clean your lens no matter what. Spare batteries are, are definitely a must. If I'm doing events photography, usually it's gonna be that bag, so I'm gonna be using the knob box. And then, maybe I might bring these. And if I bring them, that means I'm bringing the filters. So I'm just repeating myself kind of basically all around again. Uh, you know, so if I need filters, I'll bring filters with me, but this is really a limited, limited, limited. I can't emphasize enough. This is the small amount of gear. When you see me with that bag, I don't have much stuff with me because I want to keep it light. I'm really just bringing the necessities. And finally, just before I go as well, I should mention that the gear I'm using the video this right now is my Fuji X-T2 with the kit lens, the 18 to 55. I wanted to make this kind of quick and I didn't want to be jumping all around the spot, hence why I didn't change cameras, hence why I didn't change lenses. The kit lens actually stays at home mostly unless I'm doing videos, so that's why I didn't show it. It doesn't actually get put into my bag. It stays at home unless I'm going to do video, then I'll bring it with me, but it didn't need to get mentioned because I have the 56 and the 35 i don't really have as much a need to bring the kit lens with me anymore um so yeah so look that's all the gear that i really take with me on different occasions it all depends on the shoot that i'm going to be doing i hope you got something from this i hope you enjoyed it if you're interested or you want to know more about the gear mentioned there's links in the description below don't forget to check out my instagram page and join in the duffers choose the tips we're always getting questions i'm always welcome to new questions and if you have any questions at all ask i will answer and um, yeah, until the next time, later Gators.